to part two of the three-part series about um, the, the gym logo and actually we made several sketches on pencil and paper we always talk back to uh, we touch base with the client to to get the the opinion which is the right direction to go to for example another one was like the, the guy was too old it uh, was supposed to be a little bit fresher and uh, don't be afraid to find references um, not with the goal to copy it but to get uh, inspiration like um, which which sparks uh, your your inspiration to uh, find the right solution uh, but as I said don't don't uh, specifically copy it and now we have to go digital and we will be getting closer closer and closer uh, in a finalized logo so let's start with that part enjoy and as you can see um, I already scanned this drawing in as well and um, first I'm just working with pure black and white and I am uh, following tracing all the all the lines um, because uh, you always have to keep in mind like what is the aim the goal of this and the goal of this is to create a logo for a home gym and um, a logo you know I once heard that a logo is only a good logo if you can draw it with a, a big toe in the sand uh, this will be hard to draw it with a big toe. I mean, if you make it really big, um, the, the picture maybe will still take a lot of time though. Um, but it has to be like still clear outlines. Um, you, you rarely find a logo where you have a lot of like three dimensional, three dimensionality. Um, normally it's like very few colors and expressive forms things like these so here just two colors and also it's supposed to be plotted later and uh, it will be easier plotted with just few colors and a hard contrast so um, just use a standard brush and you can just see me like how I'm tracing because uh, the, the aim is that I, in the end I can discard the pencil drawing and just follow up with all my my normal outlines I really enjoy the tracing because um, I see the picture develop and I don't have to have any worries about like is this perspectively right? Um, what about the composition and everything? Um, because all those thoughts are already made uh, during the pencil sketch. So um, this is this is the point where I would really get into like this meditative uh, state, um, just just drawing, like switching the brain off and drawing the lines. The shirt is wrinkling there, that's why the stripe of the t-shirt is kind of like not so smooth anymore, showing some edges. This is exactly where the armpit is and when, uh, because the fisherman is draw like wearing a, a bag over the shoulder and so the upper arm is like close to the to the chest and this leads to wrinkles uh, around the armpit around the shoulder and there are also some rules you can apply um, when we talk about clothing you have to know like what are the centric parts where um, the, you, the, the clothes are, are actually lying on and uh, the wrinkles will always lead to that point that's why uh, like when you touch uh, your shoulder the, the the upper side of the shoulder there's like a pointy bone um, if I get it right it's kind of the area where your um, collarbone and your scapula connects and this is where um, the, the clothing the t-shirts for example are lying on 
and um, you often have uh, wrinkles starting from from that point. There are art books describing other different uh, rules, for example, when it comes to curtains, like the curtains in a shower, uh, making those always the same cylindrical forms, for example. There are a lot of rules. Uh, it's, it's not just chaos and all. And those rules are just helpful. I think if I, I, I really nailed it when it comes to the position of the fisherman, like he's leaning forward, um, holding his body weight um, on the rope and therefore like showing the upper arm, um, which is quite voluminous and um, like stressing the point that um, this is a gym logo and yeah. I uh, can tell you already that the client was very happy about it. And I'm not even exaggerating when it comes to the upper arm. I mean, of course, that's not the average. But this is this like a, a diameter diameter of uh, an upper arm like this is possible without implants. <laughs> Here I'm indicating uh, how the wrinkles are moving along. And of course they kind of have to attach where the wrinkles of the stripes are to make it look plausible. shoulder was a little bit too high on that point so I put it a little bit more down and then I started working at the neck area you have this pit exactly where the collarbones uh, connect and then there, there is where your rib cage starts and uh, connects to the sternum you have to know like how the muscles of the lower arms are wrapping around the lower arm to know that there is this crease or like you know this 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 part of uh, the the lower arm I was drawing that right there so Knowing the anatomy pays off a million times. I can't stress it enough. It is, I mean, of course, you want to immediately start drawing and want to be good at it and want to be, want it to be perfect. Um, like, there is a very good quote I really like. It's, it's about everybody wants to be somebody, but nobody wants to become somebody uh, and this is this is the huge difference like becoming somebody means putting in the effort working your ass off and getting frustrated and uh, if you see patterns like always doing the same mistake finding out what is the mistake and getting rid of it and uh, like getting out of your comfort zone and, and, and grow with your challenges and this is the way of becoming somebody and then in the end being somebody. This is kind of my mantra because like I mean I, I always of course I, I appreciate when people say um, so talented and so on but I want to stress out that it's not like 
you are born, you have talent, and then you are good at drawing. It is that you have to have the grit, the persistence to to get better. Like I was starting with with drawing stick figures, and I made my way to yeah to fishermen. We'll see where it leads. I'm, I mean, I'm not saying I already reached the end of the goal. By far not. There's like so much to learn and actually... I think you're never done. And whoever says I'm done learning, there is not, nothing much to learn like I'm... I can't get be any better because I've learned everything already. Those people are closing their minds. So the outline here is uh, actually done. And I was making thoughts about Okay, how do I still stick to the black and white pattern, but uh, can give the, the logo more three-dimensionality? So I tried a lot of different brushes until I found the right one. I told you in the introduction video that um, there was like, uh, the client wanted to have a little bit like an anime style like, this person doesn't look like anime, doesn't. It looks a little bit like an uh, Andy Warhol picture. But for animes, it's typical to have um, these, these the, the, the shadow areas in those uh, patterns, you know. So, I kind of fulfilled that demand of a client in a different way than expected. And I really like the effect it gives. You see the, the light source is again coming from the right. And that's why the shadow is down below. And actually in the end, uh, because the lower arm is like the fleshy part, you don't see a lot of contours. Uh, but uh, the client wanted to show a little bit more biceps. And then the final version, you see a lot of contours in the biceps. Just check out the final picture. Just adding some more details. Here I did the circle. In the end I, 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 I changed a little bit how it looked. But uh, in fact um, you just saw like 99% of the whole process how I made this logo. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video. And leave a comment. Um, in, in, in Twitter or in, in the Cinnamon app uh, or just follow me in, in Coil I would really appreciate that and if you want me to draw something specific just let me know so yeah I see you around